Welcome to another news-based video covering notable incidents, accidents and other developments in commercial aviation. With today's video, we'll be trying something new, selecting fewer stories to feature but going more in-depth with each one. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment. As always, if you want to check out other videos covering recent aviation news, you'll find them in our playlist titled News Summaries. But with that out of the way, let's look at incident and accident news that's taken place in the last few weeks. First up, a Frontier Airlines A320-200 suffered a bird strike while operating flight F9820. The aircraft was making the two-hour and 40-minute journey from West Palm Beach, Florida to Trenton, New Jersey on Tuesday, November 23rd. The flight was on approach to runway 06 at Trenton when multiple bird strikes took place. The pilots continued the landing and touched down safely with no issues. An inspection on the apron found that the A320 suffered a hole in the fuselage as a result of the strike. In a statement about the incident, the FAA interim report states, Aircraft struck multiple birds and post-flight inspection revealed a hole in the fuselage, Trenton, New Jersey. The aircraft, registered November 233 Foxtrot Romeo, found itself grounded for two days after the incident, but was back in the air on November 26 and has been flying multiple services per day since then. Next, on November 26, passengers on board two KLM flights that arrived from South Africa found themselves stuck on board their planes after touching down at Schiphol. During the time it had taken the aircraft to fly to Europe, the Dutch government had issued a ban on passengers arriving from South Africa. The passengers were being held while the results of COVID tests were being produced as Europe had shut down connections to Southern Africa over worries of a new variant of the virus. Let's take a look at how the ordeal unfolded. When the KLM flights landed, one from Cape Town and one from Johannesburg, the pilots were informed that the passengers could not enter the country. To begin with, the information was very vague, with pilots relaying to the passengers that they would endeavour to find out more. This is what the pilot said at 10.16 GMT. London Beach for KLM, the Johannesburg flight and also our Cape Town flight uh, cannot enter the Netherlands without any restrictions. So what that means, that is what they are finding out right now. And as soon as I, then I have that information, of course I'll let you know, but that is at the moment the information I can give you and I can imagine that you have several questions, as I have as well. But that is the uh, situation we are facing. I'll be back with information as soon as I have it. I'll try to keep you informed as good as possible. After around an hour of holding, the passengers were informed that they would be allowed to disembark in order to go to the testing centre at the airport. What happened next would depend on the outcome of the tests. It was an unwelcome end to their trip for these passengers, who were now into their 14th hour of being on board. At just after 1300 GMT, the passengers were informed that they would indeed be allowed to leave the aircraft. The pilots informed them that a bus would arrive to take them to the terminal where they would be placed in a separate room to await the results of their tests. Finally, at 13.45 GMT, the passengers began disembarking to the waiting buses. The passenger vlogging her experience showed a crowded room of passengers waiting for their tests in the terminal at just before 1500 GMT. At just after 1600 GMT or 1700 in Amsterdam, some people were still waiting to be tested. Hours later, at 0250 GMT, the one passenger vlogging her entire experience for Twitter posted that she was finally released to go home to undergo several days of mandatory quarantine, with law enforcement officers coming to check in on day 5. The next day, on Saturday, November 27th, a stowaway was found in the landing gear compartment of an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 that had landed at Miami International Airport. Reports indicated that the person was found alive and apprehended by authorities. According to Business Insider, the stowaway was taken to the hospital for examinations with U.S. Customs and Border Protection, or CBP, noting that the 26-year-old had, quote, attempted to evade detection in the landing gear compartment of an aircraft arriving from Guatemala. 
The individual was first examined by emergency medical workers before going to the hospital. Although their condition was not made public, the stowaway was apprehended by CBP. Interestingly, American Airlines itself would not provide any details of the incident and instead called it a quote-unquote security issue. The airline was referring media inquiries to Miami-Dade Police or U.S. Customs and Border Protection. However, for its part, the airline issued the following as a comment. American Airlines Flight 1182 with service from Guatemala GUA to Miami MIA arriving Saturday at 10.06 a.m. local time was met by law enforcement due to a security issue. We are working with law enforcement in their investigation. Unsurprisingly, attempting to stow away in the landing gear of an aircraft is an extremely dangerous move, often undertaken by individuals desperate to leave their country who may not be able to migrate using legal methods. Customs and Border Patrol reminded us of this by saying, persons are taking extreme risks when they try to conceal themselves in confined spaces such as an aircraft. For our third story, an Africa-bound Brussels Airlines flight had to return to the Belgian capital after its captain fell ill. The A330 was heading for Lomé via Accra on November 29th, but ended up back where it started after just over an hour in the air. On this day, flight SN277 departed Brussels with a slight delay at 11.51 local time and began to climb on a southwesterly heading. However, it soon had to turn back due to a medical situation involving the flight's captain, who suddenly became ill during the climb. The captain's poor state prompted the first officer to take control of the aircraft and halt its ascent. Tracking data from RadarBox.com shows that the maximum altitude reached by the plane was 27,000 feet. The jet turned around just northeast of Paris and made a safe landing there at 13.12 local time after just over an hour in the skies. An airline spokesperson confirmed to Simple Flying that the captain, quote, did not feel fit to complete the flight. Additionally, the Aviation Herald added that the captain's condition was not related to coronavirus. Once on the ground in Brussels, the carrier's spokesperson explained to Simple Flying that another captain took over and was able to operate the flight with the rest of the original crew. Our next piece of news takes place the next day on November 30th and involves a Boeing 737-800 belonging to Biman Bangladesh Airlines. The jet reportedly hit two POWs while taking off from Cox's Bazaar Airport, or CXB, in the country's southeast. The nearly 11-year-old plane with the registration number Sierra 2 Alpha Echo Quebec was performing Biman flight number BG348 from Cox's Bazaar to Hazrat Shah Jalal International Airport in the nation's capital of Dhaka. The incident occurred just before 6 o'clock in the evening local time when taking off from the Cox Bazaar 9,000-foot long runway. The Aviation Herald and local press note that the aircraft had just become airborne when a part of the plane struck the two cows. Realizing that the plane may have been damaged, crews flew at a lower altitude than usual for the 168 nautical mile flight. Air traffic control and emergency services at Dhaka were informed about what happened and prepared for an emergency landing. Before committing to a landing, the plane made a low pass to allow those on the ground to visually inspect the landing gear. Once assured that everything looked okay, crews made their final approach landing some one hour and two minutes after taking off. None of the 94 passengers and six crew members on the flight were injured, but authorities at Cox Bazaar Airport confirmed that they had found two dead cows on the runway. The local police reported that the aircraft's right wing struck the cows and that the animals had been removed from the runway. Our last piece of news concerns ETF Airways, a startup charter airline from Croatia. The carrier is preparing a lawsuit against Bremen Airport in Germany over damages caused by a rabbit strike in August. The rabbit strike occurred on the 2nd of August 2021 when an ETF Boeing 737-800, registered as 9 Alpha Lima Alpha Bravo, sucked a rabbit into its right engine upon landing in Bremen. The incident has cost ETF Airways 1 million euro or 1.13 million dollars and the airline believes the airport should pay for this. The incredible 1 million euro in damages as a result of this incident can be broken down as follows. 
€500,000 in aircraft repair costs, €400,000 to lease replacement aircraft, and €100,000 in other expenses that include crew transport, accommodation, and overtime. The incident took place at the height of the August charter season when EDF had plenty of contractual obligations to meet and only one other aircraft in its fleet. The CEO of EDF Airways, Stjepan Bedic, personally spent five hours walking around Bremen Airport photographing the holes in the fence that he believes prove that the airport is liable. Writing on his LinkedIn page, he said, Apparently, the airport thinks they are not liable, but they'll be really surprised when they see in court what we have for them. They tried intimidation as well, but they don't understand you can't scare a team of people who spent a better part of their childhoods in bomb shelters. He also claims that the airport security tried to send him away while he was taking these photos, allegedly shouting, Go away! No rabbits here! Well, as usual, we weren't able to cover everything in this video or go into as much detail as we would have liked. But as with all of our videos, there's a more detailed corresponding article on simpleflying.com. Check out the links in the description to learn more, and as always, share your thoughts on this video and any of the stories covered by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.